Hi everybody, I'm Bill Sanders and this is Watch Art Sci, the art and science of watch collection. Uh, today what I want to talk about are three Rolex watches that I think are very much underappreciated and unappreciated and in some cases they're mocked and hated. Uh, not so much by non-Rolex fans, but by Rolex fans, which is sort of thrown. Also, I've, I've read uh, reviewers uh, who have been, they've just been, they almost go out of their way to be troll-like about the uh, Air King, and I'm not sure why, but they do. One of the things about the Air King, and they have what I call the Bloodhound dial on it. The Bloodhound dial, the Bloodhound was a British uh, land racer. It, it, they were trying to break a land speed record, and they didn't make it, but that's okay. They were they, they gave it a good try. But what happened was that initially, when the Bloodhound, they were making it, they wanted to some dials, and somehow they, uh, Rolex, ended up doing the dials on the instrument panel for the Bloodhound. Yeah, it's okay. So, for, then they said, well, let's put that same dial style on the Air King. And I thought, wow, what a cool thing. So th that's that's the first thing is about the dial. Some, because of the failure of the Bloodhound, they, they mocked it, which is a big mistake, I think. Um, the other thing I liked about the Air King, this is a little older one, uh, not too much older, but they used to have the same movement as the Milgauss. And I thought, well, wait a minute, you know, here you have a watch with the about $2,000 less than a Milgauss, but it's got the same movement. Okay, not true anymore. They've got the Caliber 3230. It's a good, solid Rolex movement. It's the same movement that's in the Submariner No Date 41. It's in the uh, Oyster Perpetual 36 and the Oyster Perpetual 41 and the Sea Dweller Deep Sea Challenge. It has exactly the same movement, and I don't see people trashing those, but, you know, that, that that's the way things are sometimes. Uh, it reminded me, when I was in the fifth grade, there was this, uh, this redhead girl who everybody teased, and it was sort of like when, you know, a certain group did it, then they sort of latch on like the... Lord of the Flies or something. And that was the sense that I got from some of these watches uh, by both reviewers as well as uh, your perpetual whiners. Anyway, so I think this is a cool watch. And, and like I said, I don't own any Rolexes, but if I got one, I, this would be one I'd, I'd, I'd like to get. Now, the second one is, is even a bigger mystery. Uh... This, the 4161 was developed specifically for the Yacht Master 2. And what the Yacht Master 2 has is that they have a programmable countdown mechanism. Now, a countdown mechanism is used in regattas. And uh, this, I mean, it's really, a, I mean, mechanically, horologically, this is one of the best watches, in my opinion, that Rolex made. And yet, you hear people whining about it, and now ah, they don't like it, and so forth, and, you know, one thing or the other, and I thought, why? I mean, I don't own a yacht, but I, I like the Yacht Master too. Mainly because I think it's a, it's a doggone good watch, and it's got a good movement. It was discontinued in 2022, and then they go back, the, the Yacht Master with no number, that doesn't seem to do anything <laughs> compared to the Yacht Master 2. If I had a yacht, which I don't, I don't even have a rowboat, I'd get, I would go out and find a Yacht Master 2. Anyway, uh, this is another one. I think, you know, look at the movement on this thing. This is really a very, very good horological <laughs> invention. Now the final one, I think this is sort of an interesting one that's sort of been rediscovered. And this is the Cellini Prince, the Rolex Cellini Prince. And this watch came out in the early, well, it was a long time ago they used to have one, I forgot when it was. 
And then they thought in the early 2000s, they were going to bring back the prince. And so they did. And the movement in that is one that has a number of features I like. First of all, it's hand wound. Uh, it's four hertz, not my favorite, but that's okay. But you can, it's the only Rolex that I know of that's not an automatic and you flip it over and on the back, you can, you can see, you can see the movement. And, you know, you, uh, watches like the uh, Patek Philippe Gondolo 5124, you know, they've got a nice little shaped watch like this. Of course, it's been <laughs> canceled too. Uh, but here's a watch that, to me, if I were a watchmaker working at Rolex, this is the kind of thing I'd want to do. Uh, as I mentioned, the, uh, the movement that was used on the uh, Air King, the 3230, that's used on a lot of them. I mean, it's a very common Rolex movement. And, uh, you know, that's fine. But you're not getting a lot of new invention with Rolex movements, except with a few of them. <laughs> and ones like the Yachtmaster II, uh, I think the Skydweller is one that has a lot of really interesting kinds of movements, and so does this one. And it's simple, and like I said, hand wound. The other thing about this is that the design on the back, the Guilloche, and engraving is uses the same pattern that's on the front of the watch. I don't know of any other, uh, there probably are some, but I just don't know of any other watches. This is another one I think that is really neat, unappreciated, and uh, again, were I to get one, this would be one I'd probably go looking for. By the way, too, I first saw this one in this particular style. They have ones, round ones, instead of the square. This was owned by, there was a, a Horological Society of New York, had a weekend watchmaking course, and the guy who taught it had one of these. So those are the kinds of people I tend to listen to. Anyway, I'd like to hear your opinions of this. And uh, if you have any one of these watches, I'd like to hear what you have to say about it. And uh, this is an opportunity to subscribe if you like. And until next time, this is Bill Sanders for Watch Art Side, the art and science of watch collection.